Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about pulse position modulation. This is the one of the type of uh, analog pulse modulation technique. So in this uh, video, we are going to discuss about how to generate pulse position modulated signal and also how to demodulate the pulse position modulated signal, how to extract our original message signal that we are going to discuss in this particular video. The pulse position modulation means the position of the pulse is changed with respect to the message signal amplitude. So in the pulse amplitude modulation and pulse width modulation, the amplitude of the pulse is varied and the width of the pulse is varied. In the pulse position modulation, the position of the pulse is varied with respect to the message signal. So here the, pos the pulse position modulation is obtained from the pulse width modulation. In the pulse width modulation, the in that during the falling edges of the each and every pulse is varied, uh, but the rising edges of the pulses are constant. So to preserve that particular falling edges, we are going to locate a pulse based on the falling edges of each and every pulse with modulated signal. Then obviously we are able to get a pulse position modulated signal. In the pulse position modulated signal, the amplitude of the signal or amplitude of the pulse position modulated signal is constant and also width of the pulse is also constant. In the pulse width modulation, the width of the pulse is varied, but in pulse position modulation, the width of the pulse is also constant. How to generate the pulse position modulated signal? So the PPM generation as like pulse width modulation only after generating the pulse width modulated signal that signal is applied to mono stable multi vibrator so here you are familiar when you are going to watch the previous video pulse width modulation so you are able to understand how to generate a pulse width modulated signal so here one is your message signal another one is your short tooth signal so the short tooth signal will act as a reference signal and input signal is called your message signal sine wave. So both the signals are applied to inverting and non-inverting terminal of the operational amplifier. So here based on the input voltage, if the input message signal voltage is higher, you will get a positive saturation. If the short tooth voltage in the negative terminal is higher, the output is negative saturation. So like that we are getting the pulse width modulated signal. So here you can see the short tooth waveform is started here. In this particular position, when we compare the message signal and also the short tooth waveform, the message signal amplitude is higher, slightly higher compared with short tooth waveform. So then we will get a positive saturation. Then after this particular point, the short tooth waveform amplitude is higher compared with the message signal. Then we are getting negative saturation. Similar manner during the third pulse at initial state from this particular point, the message signal amplitude is higher compared with short tooth waveform. We are getting positive saturation till this particular point the amplitude of the message signal is higher. Afterwards, the short tooth waveform amplitude is higher. That's why we are getting negative saturation. Like this, we are able to get a pulse width modulated signal. By using this pulse width modulated signal, we are able to generate a pulse position modulated signal. In the pulse width modulated signal, the rising edges of each and every pulse is constant. Only the falling edges varied with respect to the message signal. Then we have to preserve that falling edges. Then we are able to get a pulse position modulated signal. So in the falling each and every falling edges, we have to generate a short duration pulse. That is our objective. So here the pulse width modulated signal is applied to the monostable multi vibrator. The monostable multi vibrator is triggered during negative edges of the pulse width modulated signal. 
then based on that particular triggering the monostable multi vibrator will generate a short duration pulse so that will be depends on the rc time constant of the monostable multi vibrator so then the resultant output is pulse position modulated output signal so this signal is transmitted and received so while receiving we have to demodulate the original sine wave from the pulse position modulated signal in the demodulation of pulse position modulated signal we are using the additional circuits like pulse generator reference pulse generator and sr flip flop so this three blocks are responsible to convert pulse position modulated signal into pulse width modulated signal then this pulse width modulated signal demodulated by using pulse width demodulator the corresponding circuit diagram is available so the output of q is connected here then you are performing this particular operation finally you are getting the detected output now the pulse position modulated signal is applied then that signal consists of original information plus noise that noise is and all eliminated by using pulse generator that pulse generated output uh, signal is connected to r reset pin of the flip flop so the rs flip flop rs flip flop or sr flip flop so the reset pin is connected to pulse generator the reference pulse generator is connected to s terminal or set terminal so here when we are going to apply this pulse position modulated signal so whenever this r terminal is 1 or r pin is 1 then you will get a output as 0 the remaining condition we are getting we are applying s as a input signal is 1 the corresponding output is q is 1 you know the corresponding sr flip flop the construction by using the corresponding nand gate okay the same sr flip flop only utilized here the corresponding truth table also represented here so by using this corresponding reference pulse generator and pulse ge pulse generator we are able to generate a pulse with modulated signal the q output of the sr flip flop is pulse with modulated signal that particular signal is applied here this entire block diagram representing pulse with demodulator so here you know that in the previous video we are represented here the noises will be eliminated by using pulse generator then the ramp and the pedestal generator we are generating the ramp and pedestal signal then the reference signal is also generated so this both the signals are added together finally we are able to get a Uh, pulse amplitude modulated signal that pulse amplitude modulated signal only clipped out by using clamper circuit then that signal is applied to low pass filter the resultant output is message signal the operation of this particular block diagram is already represented in the pulse with modulation video so when you are going to refer that particular video you are able to understand how to demodulate pulse with modulated signal so by using this pulse with demodulator we are able to generate a original message signal or sine wave by using this particular demodulator the advantages and disadvantages of a pulse position modulation like pulse with modulation in pulse position modulation amplitude is constant then obviously we are able to eliminate the noise the interference domination will be less in pulse position modulation also so we are able to easily separate the noise and the corresponding pulses when you are going to fix a threshold above the that particular threshold whatever may be the voltage that will be eliminated or clipped out then your quality of the signal will improve because of constant pulse width and amplitude transmission power for each and every pulse is same in pulse amplitude and pulse po pulse width modulation the transmitting power will vary with respect to the modulated signal but in pulse position modulation the transmitting power is constant because the amplitude and width of the pulse is constant 
disadvantage of uh, pulse position modulation this is not pulse width this is a pulse position modulation synchronization between transmitter and the receiver is required you have to synchronize both the transmitter and the receiver then only we are able to detect the signal large bandwidth is required for ppm as compared to pulse amplitude modulation so that means both pulse width modulation and pulse uh, position modulation both requires more bandwidth compared with pulse amplitude modulation these are all the disadvantages now we are going to compare pulse amplitude pulse width and pulse position the varying parameters based on pulse amplitude modulation obviously the amplitude is the varying parameter pulse width modulation width is the varying parameter and pulse position modulation position is the varying parameter the bandwidth requirement is low in pam and high in pwm and ppm in both the modulation technique the bandwidth requirement is more compared with pam while comparing with analog modulation technique uh, like am fm and pm comparing with that particular modulation technique this all the modulation technique demanding more bandwidth the transmitting power obviously varying with amplitude and varying with uh, pulse width but remains constant in pulse position modulation the noise immunity is low in pulse amplitude modulation high in pulse width and uh, pulse position because of the amplitude of the pulses is constant in both modulation technique information contained in uh, information preserved in the modulated signal in terms of amplitude vari variation with variation and position variation so this final point representing the corresponding waveforms of or waveform representation of pulse amplitude modulation pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation thank you all for watching this video so if you like like this video comment share and subscribe thank you all we will meet again with some other video